Okay, so this next question, uh, amides uh, can be produced by reacting amines with acyl chlorides. You may have also heard acyl chlorides be called acid chlorides. Okay, so this reaction proceeds via a nucleophilic addition uh, elimination mechanism. So you may not have heard of this before. However, you are asked to use your knowledge of reaction mechanisms to draw appropriate curly arrows to complete the mechanism for the reaction of CH3COCl, so ethanoyl chloride, with CH3NH2, okay, that's uh, methylamine. So you need to show all relevant dipoles and draw the products of the reaction, okay. So you can, uh, you can use the uh, structures that are given to you here to try and figure out this mechanism, okay. So the first part of the question asks you to draw all relevant dipoles, okay. So for this first step, we'll put our delta minus up there, delta plus there, we've also got a delta minus there. So this is because chlorine and oxygen are more electronegative than the carbon, so the carbon is going to be more electron deficient and slightly positive, whereas the chlorine and the oxygen are going to be slightly more electron rich. Okay? So the fact that you've seen that it says a nucleophilic addition elimination mechanism should set the alarm bells ringing, because you will have seen a nucleophilic addition uh, reaction before. So the first step here is this amine here is going to act as a nucleophile because there is a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom and it's going to attack this electron deficient carbon. And from here you're going to either break this bond here between the carbon and the chlorine or the carbon and the oxygen. Now it's going to be the carbon and the oxygen. Okay. So the pi bond will break. You can see that in step two as well. You see that you form a negatively charged oxygen atom. Uh, sorry, sorry, should I say an ion here. So you form the negative charge on the oxygen because you've broken this pi bond and the electrons are delocalized onto the oxygen atom. So what's going to happen next is this oxygen atom, so the negatively charged oxygen, is going to kick down its electron pair, reforming the pi bond, but then because chloride ions are so stable in solution, it's going to kick out the chloride ion. Okay, so that chloride ion is then lost. So the bond between the chlorine and the carbon is broken, so that's what this arrow is showing, the movement of the electron pairs in the, in the uh, carbon-chlorine bond onto the chlorine to form a chloride ion. And then what you get here is you get this intermediate structure, still with a positively charged nitrogen. Remember the charges between each step of the reaction must be conserved. So in this first step you'll see that we have no charges, it's neutral. In the second step you see that we have a positive and a negative charge. So positive and negative makes neutral, so overall we've got a neutral molecule. And then here you've got a positive and a negative charge, so it's neutral again. But what's going to happen now is this chloride ion is going to you it's going to pull off one of these protons, and then this bond is between the nitrogen and the hydrogen is going to break, and the electrons in that bond are going to relocate onto the nitrogen atom, okay, to make it trivalent once more, okay. So trivalent means it is bonded to three different uh, substituents. So from here you can draw the products. This is a very small box, so I'm going to try my best. You will form there's an H there, and then CH3 plus HCl. Okay, and it's as simple as that. That's how the mechanism proceeds. So you have the amine attacking the carbon deficient. So the amine nucleophile attacking the carbon deficient, uh, sorry, the carbon, the electron deficient carbon, <laughs> silly me, in this molecule over here, breaking the pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. The electrons then come back down in the next step, kicking out this stable leaving group, the chloride ion, and then the chloride ion is going to remove the proton from this intermediate structure, and you will form the final product. Okay. So of course, where do the marks go? So this is five marks. So you get one mark for correct products, and you need both products there, you can't just have one or the other, okay, you need both products for the marks. You get one mark for dipole here, one mark for both arrows in this first step, one mark for both arrows in the second step, and one mark for both arrows in the final step. So there's your one, two, three, four, five. I can do maths, that's good. 
and there's your five marks for that question. So this is a bit more difficult, but you can use your understanding of reaction mechanisms, drawing the dipoles in, using bond polarities and curly arrows to try and figure out how these reaction mechanisms proceed. And you'll see that a bit more in the final question.